have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Okay, here we are thinking about power supplies. So most people use computer power supplies to power their printer or they buy the little flat mon uh, flat module things. I don't know. I know exactly what I'm thinking of. But anyway, I have two options here um, that I found in my scrap spin. I remember I had this, but I also remember I had this. So this is a, a power supply that you slide into a server, HP server. All right, I've used these in my filament extruder if you haven't seen that it's over there in the corner I used them right there to power the um, battery back up for constant power so I thought yeah this is great these are 32 amps uh, 12 volts and 5 amps at 5 volts so this is a great power supply it's pretty compact um, it's not bad however uh, I also remember I had this guy, and I, I pulled this actually out of the old PS2 that I kept repairing that I got for free. And, uh, you know, this thing's pretty compact as well. It's got a nice aluminum shroud around it for heat um, dissipation. And um, I thought, hmm, I don't remember what it was. Well, check it out. 32 amps, 12 volt. Let's see if I can get the lighting just right for you. There you go. And 3 amps at 5 volts. Sweet! So actually, these are equivalent. The only difference is, is two amps for five volt difference, which I lose, I don't care. Um, so this is where the power comes out of this guy, pretty heavy duty guy, um, plugs in like that. And then you've got your five volt here and then your switch power supply here. So you have to just jumper these. Now, when I took this out of a PlayStation 2, I remember clearly testing this out because I looked at the board and I actually ripped this plug off of the board this is actually the adapter plug, so I could solder it onto whatever it is I wanted to use this for. And I wrote right here, short red to green. So I short red to green and then this power supply will kick on, just like a computer power supply. Same thing with this, I'd have to short one of these pins to a different pin to get it to work, as I did on the filament extruder. Cool thing is, is this comes with a uh, power um, switch plug-in adapter, and I believe this is also a... Um, sort of a power, um, what do you call it, a filter, EM filter, I think, don't quote me on that, but I think it's got a, well it's got a ring in there, maybe that's all there is, but I thought this was actually an EM filter, a small compact one. So that's pretty sweet, that is actually perfect um, for what I want to use, and the reason that I had picked this one over this one, besides obviously size, is I want it to fit almost flush with my base. I really don't want to be any higher than my base. So, there you go. Check it out. Like, literally, just barely. Now, you're going to probably ask me about this plug. Well, I can absolutely wire this plug completely different. I could come out the back or the side or somewhere I can get a wire through there and just solder it into there. So, no big deal. So, it'll be basically the same height as this. So it's just over an inch and a half. So there's there's my power supply adapter, or you know my power supply I'm going to use. That's it. Eight months later. Welcome back to the power supply dilemma. So originally, I was going to use this 12 volt power supply. This is a really nice compact thing, and then I got to thinking I should probably end up using 24 volts because I can use the same amount of current, get more wattage into my motors. So I went looking and I found this power supply. So this is a uh, 5 amp, 24 volt DC power supply. Unfortunately it has the same problem as the other one, it's just a bit too tall. So as I was looking for plugs and things in my old boxes, I uh, ran across a couple more power supplies and ended up finding quite a few of them. These are nice little units, most, well I wouldn't say most, some TVs have built-in power supplies and they're sort of modular so you can just pop them out and use them for other things. I mean here this one's actually a straight up power supply. What is it? 48 volt, that's an odd one, 2.7 amp. Anyway, so after looking 
this was one of my other options uh, it happens to be 24 volt at 4 amp and I had these three and I was trying to figure out what to do because 4 amps really isn't enough to do what I want <clears throat> if I run 2 amps per motor plus the extruder I'm already maxing this guy out it does have a 5 volt out but not a 12 volt out so I have to put 12 volts in there somewhere so after digging finding all these I ran across this guy now this is a TV power supply yet again and we'll have to look here see if we can focus there you go 24 volt 6 amp 12 volt at 4 amp and 1 amps for a 5 volt now the alternative the reason that again I'm using 24 volt is I can run the motors I think there'll be more torque on the motors if I use 24 volt so what I was thinking actually is this power supply is still more compact but if I could find a DC DC converter an up converter boost converter that's approximately this size it would actually be better for me to still use this power supply and not this one and then I can just get a uh, um, this also has 5 volt 3 amps out so that's a little better where this one is only 1 amp 5 volt out now this one doesn't have 12 volt but again we're using a boost converter so it will have 12 volt so I'm really really contemplating what I should do here you guys can throw me your thoughts but um, by the time I post this video I may have already decided what I'm going to do one month later welcome back everybody so this is a PS3 power supply by the way don't know why I wrote that anyway I am gonna go ahead and use this power supply but I'm going to add these boost converters to convert to 24 volt so I'm gonna add two of them hopefully I can run them in parallel with no serious issues as long as one doesn't draw more than the other or some weird thing happens I should be okay ground all the grounds should be fine uh, so we're gonna give that a test and I am gonna use this power supply 12 volt out 24 to the motors and everything else would be 12 volt and then 5 volt because this also has 5 volt out 3 amps that should be enough to drive all the little stuff so yeah just thought I'd throw that in here and go from there several hours later okay connected connected and jumpered connected connected and <laughs> yes it's connected so what we're gonna do is just turn this on and hopefully it don't blow up Ta -da! yeah it's fan output right there anyway cool nothing exploded looks like our hall effect end stops are on And uh, at least that one's working. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now we can continue. I'm going to hook this up, but I was waiting because I really don't want to blow this up. <laughs> LCD screen in place. This is a makeshift setup, of course, for testing. Moment of truth. Yay! It works. Now the question is, is it gonna go the right way when I home it? That's the question. Ready? Uh, nothing. Oh. Okay, I think I found the problem. I think what it was is, and I haven't tested this yet, these four wires each one of them is a coil and I think I had them not connected to anything basically so each coil was sort of against the other one and in that sense it was sort of an open circuit even though it was actually not it just basically put it into a locked mode so let's try this again is it gonna go up or down ready hmm third time's the charm. I think I still had wires mixed up unknowingly. I think I crimped the wires on the motors up there wrong. This is the factory wiring and I crimped it um, 
black, red, blue, green, instead of the red and the green and the red and the blue. So now, which way is it gonna go? Up or down? Hope it goes up. Ah, it did. Wow, do you hear how quiet that is? Uh, I put the... Uh, I put rubber dampeners on the motors. Holy cow, that thing is quiet. I'm not sure what the settings are for the uh, the motor the motor controllers. I don't know what amperage, but either way, that's really quiet. 24 volts in, and let's check the amperage. Okay, so they were at 500 milliamp or one half of an amp. I've moved them up to 1.5 of an amp. Oh yeah, there's there's our noise. Although still a lot quieter. So, yeah. I'm gonna plug the fan in. I wanna just keep an eye on how hot or cold these get, but more testing for audible noises, but for now, it does actually sound a lot quieter. Here's the octagon test. Amp and a half. Mm, motor drivers are, I mean, warm. They kinda hurt my hand. Still pretty quiet. I'll have to go listen to the audio of what it used to sound like. But it seems a lot quieter, and that's with those rubber bushings in the motors. All right, well, another late night. It's uh, getting closer to one o'clock. And I got another big mess to clean up. Luckily, I already did the dishes. <laughs> Except for my ice cream bowl. Anyway, success. We have managed to actually get this thing operational with its internal wiring and the makeshift attachments of the internal wiring and the makeshift board so I'd call that a successful day now it's time to clean up go to bed and maybe get some rest thanks for watching bye ah uh, just gonna end a video like that are ya well you got something to look forward to let me show ya All right, hang in there. See you next time. Leave a comment. God bless you guys. Bye. Got anything to say? Who, me? Yeah. Um, I love my honey. That's okay. Good. Thanks. Love you. Bye. <laughs>